Hi, this is Ben from Curious Turtle. I'm going to show you a few little techniques to, to help speed your rotoscoping along using Mocha and After Effects. Now, unlike most of my Mocha tutorials, I'm going to be starting in After Effects this time. Because what we're going to be doing first is we're going to be minimizing the amount of stuff that we actually have to roto um, using procedural maps. So we're going to be rotoing this girl out. Uh, and there's a few things that's going to make our life a little bit tricky. Uh, for one thing, we've got some nice hair detail here, which is going to be t uh, tough to roto out. And there's a bit of bit of camera movement as well as the uh, the movement of the girl herself. So instead of trying to rotoscope the whole thing here, we're going to first start out with a uh, with building up a high contrast mat. Um, so I'm going to just duplicate my layer and call this uh, call this hair. And what I'm going to do is I'm tr going to try to concentrate on getting a, a good black and white image of the hair here or of the head here, uh, keeping in as much of the hair detail as possible. So when creating these procedural mats, I'm going to dive in first to calculations. Um, so I'm going to quickly take a, a look through my different color channels and see if any of them sort of scream out at me as a as a good contrast channel. Um, blue is looking pretty good, uh, but if we have a look here in the red channel, we've got this sort of hair here, which we don't have in the blue. The, the blue is sort of missing some of this stuff, and it's also really quite noisy. Uh, the green is also contains a few more details in the hair that the blue doesn't. So I'm going to start off by trying to mix the uh, the blue and the green channels together using calculations. So I'll come over to my input channel, set that to blue. My second layer is going to be green. So my second channel is going to be green. Turn this up to 100%. And all I get is my green channel put in there. And that's because my blending mode is set to normal. So if I change this to uh, overlay, or actually maybe we'll just try multiply, because I want to keep in as much of the darker details as possible. Uh, so multiply as opposed to normal gives me a much better uh, starting point for the for the mat there, and in fact, I'm going to duplicate this trend, uh, this calculations here. Uh, this is giving me a bit more detail, uh, but instead of having green here, I'm going to have red instead. That's brought a bit of there of the uh, the face back, but it's also brought in a tiny amount of the hair a bit more in there. But it's still not it's still not great here. We're still not getting the the sort of high contrast that we actually need. So just come in here, add a levels command, and let's just bring that back. Now I'm only interested in this area here. I'm not, I don't care what's going on over here in the uh, in the borders of the image. So I'm just going to bring this back. Try not to eat away at the hair here. We want to try and keep that in as much as possible. Okay, let's just play around with the gamma just a wee bit. Maybe take that in a bit more and then take the gamma the other way. There we go. So we've we've now got a uh, high contrast map going on, which is going to serve as the basis for, for some of the roto on that part of the of the image. So instead of having to rotoscope out all of this hair, we're going to just use this mat to uh, to keep it in. Now this doesn't stop us from having to do. Uh, any rotoscoping at all because we are going to have to fill in this hair here and, and this this side of the head basically completely but it's uh, it's going to take us most of the way so that's the that's the hair there so let's see if we can if there's any other part we can start to build up um i'm going to try and uh let's have a look through the other channels here this is looking quite good just with the uh, the red channel again here. It's got a nice a nice amount of contrast going on with the uh, the jeans. So I'm going to see if I can pull something good off that as well. So again, let's just duplicate up my uh, original girl here. Call this uh, jeans mat. I'll call this hair mat. And come in again into channel calculations. And just go on the red here, uh, turn this one up, 
to 100%. And turn this to overlay, see what we can get with that. Overlay is all right. Hard light, linear light, linear light. Yep. Vivid light, pin light. Oh, I think we're going to go with linear light. Okay, and again, just come into the color correction with a levels command here. And just try and eat away at m as much of that as possible. Again, I don't care about the rest of this stuff. I'm going to try and push it quite far. Cool. Okay, so we've got my jeans, so let's uh, create a quick garbage mask around there. Let's not take in the shoes. And let's just keyframe that. We're going to just do a really, really quick garbage mask. This should only take a few seconds here. We'll do the same with the, uh, the hair layer. Again, come in. Uh, let's just see what we can get away with here. And again, just keyframe that up. Do I need a keyframe in there? Mm, not really. Or maybe just a little bit there. Okay, put these two together, see what we got. Well, we've got a, we've got a starting point. We've got something that looks like, looks like something. Uh, we're going to save a lot of time on, uh, on these particular areas here. Okay, so how do we use this in Mocha? Well, let's just render this out. Let's just add this to the render queue. Uh, I'm going to set my output module to animation because I, I want a, um, I want a lossless codec to work with here. And channels RGB. Yeah. So we're going to be basically exporting this out to use this Hikon mat in um, Mocha as well. Now, those of you who are used to working with Loom mats in After Effects will be a bit surprised that I'm working with black on white rather than white on black. Because traditionally in After Effects, white is 100% opaque and black is 100% transparent. Well, the simple reason is that it's going to help our workflow once we bring this clip over into Mocha. Um, it will introduce another couple of issues that we'll, we'll have to work through uh, a bit later. But we'll, we'll cross that when we come to them and they're, they're actually not very big at all. So let's load up our clip in Mocha. So let's come in and we'll just take in our girl here. 1920 by 1080, 25 frames a second. Turn my frame offset down to zero. Not entirely necessary that, but uh, I'm just going to do it anyway. Um, so. Now the question is, how do we use that um, mat clip within Mocha? Well, we need to first create a layer. This can be any sort of layer itself, and I'm just going to rename this icon. And turn off tracking. And if we come down to the mat clip down here, we can import our clip, so Mocha Roto Girl 1. So this is the clip we just exported from After Effects. Take that in here. We see it's the same one. Hit finish. Now we exported out in RGB. Um, I've found that when exporting out QuickTime movies to use as, as mat clips, taking it out as RGB and letting Mocha do the uh, do the conversion is, is generally gives the most consistent results. So let's let's take a look at what we got. I'm going to turn my mats on here. Let's take the colorize down to what it normally is, about 0.3. And if we turn that up, we can see that it's actually taking in my mat and is using that 
as the basis for the, uh, the mat on that particular layer there. Now we can use that when we're, we're working with tracks and things, but I'm not going to. So I'm just going to turn this off. In fact, I'm going to deactivate uh, this layer just so that it doesn't affect anything for the, uh, for the time being. Um, and I'm going to do my, do my tracking.